I need that. It's another absolutely adorable little classic here on Hubnut. This time I'm going to tell you all about this exceedingly rare Auto Bianchi Bianchina van. We'll start with the history. Auto Bianchi was formed by Bianchi Bicycles and Fiat Motor Company with the input of Pirelli tyres. Those three companies came together to create Auto Bianchi. Bianchi continues to make bicycles today. It was formed in 1899. It dabbled in cars and trucks before the First World War. And then after the Second World War, identified it was a market for small utilitarian vehicles and turned to Fiat for help with that. Under the skin of this gorgeous little thing is basically a Fiat 500. So that means we've got a tiny little straight twin engine under the floor here that's mounted the same as it was in the uh, Fiat uh, 500 Giardiniera. So this is the second generation of Fiat 500 which was introduced in 1957 as was this vehicle. So we'll take a look at the mechanical package at the, in a minute but the swing axle rear suspension which is why we've got a fair bit of positive camber on display here. I've just reversed which exaggerates it all the more. But this is an exceedingly rare van belongs to Mike here who runs Step Aside Coachworks. Step Aside being a lovely little village here in Pembrokeshire. And he found this vehicle in the 1980s, languishing in a body shop, not a million miles away. It had some accident damage, a front wing was off, but it had just been abandoned. He found it in the late 1980s. He restored it. He did this lovely two-tone paint effect because that's what his business does. And it has seen very, very little use since. There's still only about 6,000 miles on the clock. It is mostly not being used at all. Uh, but this is based on the very pretty uh, and very practical um, estate car version of the Auto Bianchi. You can get them as a saloon, a very pretty little drop top or an estate and even rarer, the panelled in van version. Let's take you into the back for a closer look. We have to ping both sides on this early one. Lift the hatch and we're in. And you'll notice this one actually has a little back seat. That's a conversion because it was based on the estate. It was quite an easy conversion to do. You could put a rear seat in. But if we ping all these covers here, all three of them, we can lift the engine cover and there we find the little twin cylinder engine. Like a, let's say the gorgeous little Jardiniera Fiat 500 estate also had that straight twin engine canted right over. I mean, the mechanical package is the masterpiece of Dante Giacosa, who also designed the original Fiat Topolino. Uh, he developed these. And importantly, he also developed another very significant Auto Bianchi, the Primula. That was the first front wheel drive car to really standardize the end on gearbox, unequal length drive shafts that are now so commonplace in the world. Fiat kind of trialed that technology via Auto Bianchi. By the uh, late 1960s, Auto Bianchi was in a spot of bother and Fiat bought the company outright. And uh, it continued making the Lancia Y10. That was actually an Auto Bianchi and sold as such on the Italian market. We got them in the UK as Lancias. But in truth, they were Auto Bianchis. And uh, when that finally came to an end in 1996, that was the end of Auto Bianchi. But yeah, beautiful little car. So I think we should take a closer look inside. Climbing aboard, it's all a bit clangy. It's very tinny. We've got nothing on the roof here apart from this slightly ribbed effect like something's been painted on to try and insulate it. But it is austere in the extreme. Mass expanse of uh, just painted metal and not really very much to look at at all. Uh, we've got a windscreen washer. Um, I think that's a charge light indicators, sorry, ignition switch. Uh, that one's wipers, I think. I have no idea what that one is. And we've got an identical switch hidden under here, which operates the lights. I think that opens up a little vent to allow some fresh air in. And then you've got little vents here as well. Come from the back where the engine is, can direct heat down here, turn a little flap, directs it up to the windscreen for some uh, demisting action. It's a little four speed gearbox. There is no synchro mesh. We'll get to that when we're driving along. And then down here are controls for the choke and the starter, both cable operated. Uh, here we've got a stalk which flicks between the different light settings, side lights, main beam, dip beam, very Italian, and a little indicator stalk 
in front of that. So have gorgeous little horn button, gorgeous little horn. Very, very cute. But yeah, 6,300 miles on the clock. And it is a bit of a tight fit for um, fairly large old me. But, and I'm not even going to attempt to try and get into the back because uh, it looks a little claustrophobic back there. But uh, I think we should probably get you strapped in and go for a drive. Right, there are no seat belts. I'm going to pull my sleeves up a bit. It's a little warm in here. So um, nothing to strap in for there. So we just turn the ignition on. Pull this little handle down here. And the little twin cylinder engine fires very noisily into life. It's a very Italian sort of a noise, to be honest. It reminds me of Piaggio's and Vespers. Piaggio's are made, made Vespers. That doesn't make much sense, but I know what I mean. But if I give the wipers a pump, there we go, and put the wipers on, uh, there is a problem immediately apparent. These gorgeous little wipers are almost entirely useless because they don't wipe this side of the screen. It's still the left-hand drive pattern. Fiat 500s at least swap the wipers over for right-hand drive. Not so much the Fiat. So now I've got moisture in front of me. Probably take it. Yeah, chokes fully off now. Uh, away we go. There's a little 479cc engine. Later versions got the 599, sorry, 499cc. So these are only about 18 brake horsepower, I think. Little indicator on. Make sure everything's clear, and away we go. Bit of double declutching there. Try and smooth out the gear changes because of no synchro mesh. Synchro mesh is a most marvelous invention. It transformed how cars drive. You have to dance on the pedals a lot more in this. Oh yeah, it's noisy, but it's um, it's a very happy little noise, I think. Up to 40 miles an hour, I was too quick on my gear change there. And then coming back down the gearbox, you have to rev match and try and give the throttle a blip as you're braking. That wasn't too bad a down change. And then as soon as you reach a hill, you start realizing just how little power this thing actually has. It is no performance machine, but then the base vehicle wasn't either. And everything feels threatening because it's so very, very tiny. But I must say the ride is actually really quite good, I think. I think the wheelbase is a little bit longer than a 500 and uh, it means it just feels a little more composed i think a little less choppy the steering is by steering box and it is a bit vague but uh, it still feels very tight as it should do with only 6300 miles on the clock there's a strange little chirruping noise coming from the engine but uh, i don't think we'll worry too much about that it is immensely charming perfect down change yes I'm going to do a separate video on double declutching, but it's a key part of how you drive a car with what's known as a crash gearbox. Your blind spots, I've got to come all the way around here to go right, so I'll make sure I can see. Yeah, it's a lovely gearbox, it actually responds really well. I've driven other Fiat 500s and really struggled with a gearbox. Some of them are not as kind as this one is. Out of the way, dainty little car coming through. It's hard to imagine what the target mark market was for such a tiny little van. But clearly some people thought they were worth it. You just have to wring its neck. Because there is no torque, so you've got to use revs. Oh, 16% up, this might be a bit of a challenge. Test those double declutching skills. Not bad, not bad. 
Oh, this is a struggle. Come on, little van. It's a bit gloomy in here. I feel I should put my headlights on, but I don't think we can cope with the draw on the little dynamo. There's a little straight twin air-cooled engine. It's not the most refined. clutch stuck that time that makes life extra exciting in the front we find a tiny spare wheel um i'm not even sure what that is but it's there uh fuel tank which you top up under here and this gorgeous tool bag which if we uh open it up contains a load of the original tools i believe let's have a look inside yeah look at that we got the original jack that looks like a later edition uh, some beautiful old tools in here, uh, grips and the jack. So that's just lovely, lovely that such items have survived. It's just such a jolly thing, it makes me smile so much. It turns even a little potter to the shops into a full-blown adventure. You've got the steering that's like, Whoa, do I want to go around the bend or not? Swing axle rear suspension to keep you on your toes. The gearbox, the all drum servoless brakes, but which are not very powerful, it must be said. So you wouldn't want to put too much payload in the back, but at least you've got the advantage, the more stuff you put in the back, the quieter it'll be, it'll drown out some of that engine noise. Just pray you don't have mechanical issues once it's fully laden. Of course, when this car was built, rear engines were very very common Renault had a whole range of them Simca Fiat uh, for a lot of companies rear engine was the solution it was the simplest way to proceed it actually reminds me uh, last time I was down this way driving to Saunders foot which we are heading towards I was in a tuk-tuk very similar sort of vibes in a way but a bit more stability so really this was like a luxury Fiat 500. It's a bit more like a car. We've got standard sort of looking wings, a bit more like you might expect. It looks like a little car just shrunk down in miniature. And uh, they managed to find around 275,000 homes for these cars. I can see family hub nut. Hi! This little thing gets so much attention, it's quite amusing. So when Fiat took over Auto Bianchi, I'm afraid one of the first things they did was kill off the uh, Bianchina. I guess it was just seen as too much of a threat to the 500. But like I say, Fiat kept Auto Bianchi to full focus on the smaller car market and that led to the A112 which was a pioneering super mini again Auto Bianchi used to test the format before Fiat jumped in with their own 127 let's see if we can find some slightly faster roads so and we can open her up a bit and see if she's got anything to give Oh, when you get a double clutch right, oh, it's just the sweetest feeling. Here we go then, 50 mile an hour speed limit. And I've actually been held up by other traffic here, we're only doing 40. But uh, fourth gear actually has a bit of um, length to it. It's quite tall. And that's us knocking on the door, I should say, at 50 miles an hour. We're not quite there, blocked by traffic. But uh, it's a lot better than I actually expected. I thought it would be absolutely terrible 
and then you think about 40 miles an hour and it just isn't you can almost settle settle back and cruise at this it's not bad at all it's just so joyously simple there's so little complication here and yet it's still so good at being a little car you can really feel what made the Fiat 500s themselves so special so that is the Auto Bianchi Bianchina. This must surely be one of the rarest cars on UK roads. Still right hand drive and an actual van. I'm not sure where you'd find another. So a couple of saloons, but there really is not an awful lot out there. So huge thanks to Step Aside Coachworks for letting me have a drive of this really rather precious little vehicle. It's been absolutely amazing. I've loved it. So much character, it wants to give so much, even though it has so little. And I just love that. That's why power, less is more. Thank you very much for watching. Um, don't forget you can head to the Hubnut stores and buy merchandise should you wish. Details in the description below. Uh, but yeah, give us a like, subscribe if you wish. I wish I'll see you in a future video. Farewell.